Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we will learn how to create alphabets using ribbon lettering. Now, if you're wondering what ribbon lettering is, well, the name says it all. Basically, we're trying to make our alphabets look like they have been created using a ribbon. Now, if ribbon lettering is something that you've been wanting to learn, then I'd recommend that you watch the video I posted last week. I've linked it here on the screen and in the description box below. In that video, I have talked about the basics of ribbon lettering and I've tried to explain in a lot of detail with the help of a few practical examples how you can easily mimic the ribbon effect by keeping in mind a few tiny details. So today we're going to take all of those concepts we learned last week about ribbon lettering and we're going to use them to create lowercase alphabets. I'm Neha from Entrepreneur. I share tips and tricks about easy to create art. And today, while we're learning to create lowercase alphabets using ribbon lettering, I'll also try and show you a few different styles of ribbons. So for the first four alphabets, I have chosen to use the same color for both sides of the ribbon. This is slightly more challenging than using two different colors to represent two different sides of the ribbon. Because when you do that, your transitions and folds are more clearly evident because of the color change. But when you're using the same color to represent both sides of the ribbon, you need to be smart about how you choose to color your transitions or folds. So if you observe these uh, four alphabets more closely, you will see that I've always tried to pair the darker part of one side of the ribbon with the lighter part of the other side of the ribbon so that I can make the folds or transitions more evident. By now, I hope you would have noticed that adding these white lines adds significant value to your ribbon letters in terms of how realistic they look. Now, in my previous video, I did talk about why we add these lines. But another thing that we need to think about is where exactly do we need to add them? And does our decision have any impact on the outcome that we get? I'll answer this question at the end of the video when we have a few alphabets to pick from and compare with.
During the entire video, you would have noticed that I added these white outlines to the folds of the ribbon and I said I will tell you at the end of the video where exactly do we need to add these white lines. So here it is. Now if you look at the alphabets B and D, you will see that both of them have an ascending loop but there is a slight difference in the ascending loops of the alphabets that I have drawn. In alphabet B, the tail of the loop is in front of the downward stroke. Whereas in alphabet D, the tail of the loop is behind the downward stroke. Now let's see how we can achieve this result. And this logic is going to apply to all strokes of any alphabets that intersect with one another. Now these are not the only parts of your alphabet that you're going to outline. You're going to want to outline each turn in your alphabet because it will represent a fold of the ribbon. But when you have two intersecting strokes, you have a choice to make. Like for example, in this alphabet H, if I outline the downward stroke, then it will make it look like the tail of the loop is behind the downstroke. Whereas if I outline the tail itself, it will make it look like the tail of the loop is in front of the downstroke. And the same logic will apply to your alphabet Y. Now based on how you've highlighted the intersection of the stroke, you'll also decide how you're gonna highlight the upcoming fold of that particular stroke. Now if you look at our second alphabet H, I have chosen to keep my tail in front of the backstroke so I have to highlight my fold in such a way that it represents the same thing. So that even when I'm only looking at the fold, it should look like the tail is in front of the backstroke and I'll do the opposite in the first H. The same logic will apply to the descending loop of alphabet Y. That's all for today guys. I hope you enjoyed and learned from the video. If you have any suggestions or any specific topics you'd like me to do a video on, do let me know in the comment section below. I'll see you next week with another video. Till then take care.